In this video I'm looking at inorganic qualitative analysis. So we've got a question here that deals with two inorganic compounds of transition elements A and B. And a student carries out some test tube tests on them and she then analyzes the results to identify what they are. So the observations of the tests are in the table. So from the results, we've got to identify A and B and give their formulae. And we've got to construct ionic equations for the formation of the products C through to G from the relevant ions in aqueous A and aqueous B. So if you want to pause now, have a go, and then play on for the answers. Okay, so the way I'll do the answers, we'll look at C through to G first of all. So we'll identify those and give the equations. And then we'll summarise all of the information and say what A and B actually are. So C first of all, pale blue precipitate C is formed when a few drops of ammonia is added to aqueous A. And then a deep sol solution D forms on addition of excess aqueous ammonia. So C must be copper 2 hydroxide and one form of the equation you can write is that one and I'm going to show you another form in a moment. So D now, the deep blue solution, is that complex ion there and the equation for its formation looks like that. So if we move on to E now. So that's an orange-brown precipitate on addition of a few drops of ammonia. That's iron 3 hydroxide. And the equation for its formation, or one way of writing the equation for its formation is that. That's the simple form. I will show you the more complicated one in a moment. So if we look at test 2 now, there was no change for A for either of those. But for B, we got a white precipitate when the barium nitrate was added after the nitric acid. So F must be barium sulfate, and the equation for its formation looks like that. Moving on to test 3, we've got no change for A with nitric acid, and a cream precipitate G when silver nitrate solution was added. So the cream precipitate G must be silver bromide, and its equation looks like that. So we've established that A contains copper 2 plus ions and bromide ions, and so therefore A is copper 2 bromide, and B contains iron 3 plus ions and sulfate ions, so it's iron 3 sulfate. So those other equations, those alternative equations for the precipitation reaction, so it's this one here and this one here, so we can write that one for the copper and this one for the iron. So we'll finish off with a couple of typical questions that might be tagged on at the end of something like this. What was the purpose of adding the nitric acid first in tests two and three? And imagine another student accidentally used hydrochloric acid instead of nitric acid for both tests two and three. What different observations would he observe? and explain your answer. So again, if you want to pause the video, have a go, and then play on when you're ready. So question one, why did they add nitric acid first in tests two and three? Well, what that does is it will eliminate or remove any carbonate ions that may be present and could give a false positive result because barium carbonate and silver carbonate are both insoluble white precipitates. So if carbonate ions are present, they would give a false result. In question two, the presence of those chloride ions from the HCl would make no difference with test two, but test three would give a white and cream precipitate with A and a white precipitate with B.